This is the place. This is the address. Doesn't look like there's anybody here. Hello? Is anybody in there? Doc? You in there? Who is it? Uh, it's me, Terrell. I, I got a clock for you that's got some neon on it. I want you to fix it. We're closed. Go away. <sighs> Come on, Doc. Open the door. Sorry to disturb you, but I was wondering if you could fix the neon on this clock. Well, let me look at it. Mm, let me see. It's one of those kind. Nah, I can't fix that. Go away. Well, I ain't taking no for an answer. Come on, Doc! What? You're the only one that can fix this stuff. Come on! I know you can fix it. I told you I didn't want to fix that clock. Oh, come on. I know you can do it. You're the only one around here that can do that. I mean, get your keister in. Pterodactyl here. And today, we're gonna show you how to do neon. And we're here with Doc Neon, who we met in Portland, Indiana. And he does the neon. And he's gonna walk us through how to do neon. Isn't that gonna be fun? Okay, Doc, what's the first step to make a neon? Well, first of all, you need to get a piece of pat we call pattern paper, which is lined and dotted, which makes it easy to draw straight lines and measuring and what have you. And you draw out your letters backwards. Your units lay down and backwards when you bend them. So when you pull them up, they'll be forward. So you draw out your pattern, like this is a simple TD for pterodactyl, of course. And uh, then we get a piece of screen wire Aluminum is good. And is that you, regular window screen that yes. you buy at the store? Yes. And you lay that over there. We used to use non-burning material, but I got out of that, and then they had a fiberglass. But now it's cheaper and simple just to use pattern paper with a piece of screen, and you can move it around as needed. And then you bend your glass on that. So we're going to take some glass tubing and bend it into the shape of that. Yes. That's the next step after the layout of what you want. We'll make the T first, then the D, and once, the, and then we weld them together and put electrodes on them, and we have the whole unit, which is ready to go to the next step. Now let's talk a little bit about the glass tubing. It is glass, right? It's glass yeah, tubing? It's glass. Okay, and I see you have some glass tubing here, but it's like different colors. There's clear, there's yellow, there's red, there's, what is that, white or silver? Well. There's three main things that makes all the colors of neon, and there's probably over 50 colors, and that is the glass, the gas, and the powder inside the glass. And so you take a clear tubing like this, and you put neon red gas, and you get a neon red gas, because it's clear. Or you put argon in it, and you get blue. Well, you put a fluorescent powder inside, and use a blue gas, you get a different blue and you can put a green fluorescent powder and get green from blue and you can get a variety of colors from just that blue gas now the glass itself you can get stained glass which is a colored glass like some of these and you put the blue gas inside of it and it works like a backwards black light remember the days when the posters and the black lights it works like that only backwards your blue gas fluoresces the powder from the inside which inert in turn goes through and lights up the tubing and so you get a different color from blue gas. So it's uh, three things, the gas, the glass, and the powder inside the glass. Gives you all your colors. So two G's and a P. The glass, the gas, and the powder. Yes, I guess you're right. <laughs> I think I got a little gas. <laughs> oh, speaking of gas. Uh, we got some, we'll have some burners going here, so if you've got a, a little gas... Uh, I can add, yeah. add, that's a little added... Don't put too much in here. Heat. You know, don't put too much in here and make a shark tank thing out of this. <laughs> 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 OK, 
Okay, so how, how do we know how long of glass or to make this tea? Okay, well there's a quick rule of thumb I do. You can go ahead of yourself and get a, a stick. By the way, glass comes in four foot or close to it on sticks, the way you buy it to start with, is a normal length. Does and it come in different diameters? Yes, it comes in, uh, my main uses is 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, and 15 millimeter. That's the four main sizes we get and I deal with. And uh, this is 12 millimeter. It's okay. about a little close to half inch. But anyway, okay, uh, rule of thumb, as I was going to say, you can lay it on your letter T, like if you want to know how much it takes to make the T over to here. You can lay it like that and put your finger there. Now that's the top of it, and then you can lay it there. You can kind of just go along and figure it that way. And that way you can put, give a little extra, and you use a file and score it to cut it. That's how I cut myself. And you snap it off. Wow. That way you don't have all that to whip around when you're bending. It's easier to work with. Well, that was easy. And now you use a cork in one end like that and you use a blow hose we call it to keep some pressure when you make certain bins it's tight the tighter bins you really need the blow hose and you put the blow hose on the tube on one end like that now you got pressure that way when you bend you put a little bit of breath in there and it doesn't collapse so you start out with uh, getting a piece of chalk and marking there give a little extra for the electrode which will be going which will be put on later and then on this end you mark where you're going to bend and that's your first bend you make a U bend now we turn the blower on to start up the fires so is this is this what's going to heat up the the tubing Yes, this is what we call a ribbon burner, and you can change the width, the length of the fire that puts it uh, when you cross the top here. And uh, see this, you can pull it clear out and get a full length, or you can bring it into a little bit for different uh, purposes. And uh, we light up, we have ma two main fires. The rib, I'm sorry, this is the ribbon burner, and this is what they call a crossfire. I'll get to that eventually. And so we'll light up the ribbon burner first. All right, so we let's fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. Fire All it right, up. here we go. Boink. Uh, get back up there. Sometimes it'll come up pretty quick. Is that propane or natural gas? It's propane with a, a, a roots blower that puts gas and air together to make it hotter. And you adjust it down here and here. Here's air and here's gas. And now you adjust the flame where you can bring it in about, oh, okay. that's about right. And then you can pull it out for a larger piece of the bin. But we're going to start out with a smaller flame there. Now I'm going to go over to the, what we call the crossfire. <laughs> adjust those down. About like that. Now we're ready to bend. All right. So, we take the blow hose, take the tube, it's marked here. Our first bend will be the, first bend will be on the T. And I kind of feather it to start with, so this new glass is unleaded and it's more, uh, what do you call it, it's, it's cracked, it's worse for cracking, so you've got to kind of preheat back and forth. And then you start heating the bin here, and you rotate it so it's heated all the way around to start with. Now it's getting there. Getting soft. And then you work on the sides and the back, and you're just going to bring it up. There we go. We make a U bend here. And I'll kind of hold it till it cools. So that's the front of the top of the T. 
Now, when it stiffens up, you do the next bend right here. That'll be the coming the part here on the teeth. Now we can do that on this burner too and preheat it. They made us a while back go to unleaded glass. The old stuff is easier, it melts quicker, and it doesn't crack as much. Sometimes this stuff will crack when you don't want it to because it's unleaded. It's a little harder glass, I think. But the lead was more toxic. Well, actually, this glass, I've been doing this over 40 years. I don't think you get much lead from a glass to hurt you. In other words, it's molded in and, you know, it's like... Uh, so it's trapped in there. I think it was an EPA thing. Yeah, there we go. Now we'll heat that. And now we'll focus right here. Now I gotta, you gotta pre-position yourself. Now you're just putting a little bit of air pressure from your lungs on there? Yeah, just a little bit. Just to keep it from collapsing as you bend it. Yeah, if you blow too hard, you'll blow a bubble. And if you don't blow enough, it'll be flat. You can get it hot both sides like that. Now the last bend you want to heat, flip it around like you want to heat the top and the back like you're going to twist it. Top and back like this. And heat a good area and then do that. Wow. That's how you make a key. And then the next bin, you mark it down here ahead of yourself. So it just it just cools naturally. You want it yes. to cool naturally. Yes, under just room temperature it just cools. And I guess you don't want to grab it for a while. I've had my share of grabbing something where I just needed to didn't remember. <laughs> here we go, and then you come over here and uh, do it again. Now I use both burners usually on a tight bend. I can heat it over here in a tighter area and then come over here and smooth it out and then it makes a nice bend. But I think I can do it all on this, on this T. So this is really an art because you make it look easy. Oh, it's just like... Am I going to try to bend some of this? Yes, if you want to. Okay, yeah, I want to give it a try. Just don't burn yourself, that's my big thing. You don't want to touch the metal on the... Oh, I've been burned before. I own a lawnmower shop. Yeah, plenty of muskins. <laughs> and customers not paying. That's a burn you don't want to yeah. experience. Mm, see that? And then you can kind of help it out a little bit with the block, the non-burning block. There, like that. Just hold it till it gets stiff. Now you've got the T, and uh, we'll come over here. Oh, electrodes. these are what they call electrodes. They make them in tubulated and non-tubulated. This is a Tubulated. That means it has a little tube on it, so you hook it up to the system. We'll show you later. And then the non-tubulated. There. They do not have the little tube. You just need one end to pump it down and uh, process it. Okay. Put the hose back on. You take the tubulated electrode. I like to put those on first usually. Then you weld the electrode to the end here. Pre kind of preheat it. Now, this is a crossfire which gives you an intense point where you can really weld. When you put two tubes together or electrodes, See that? Watch. Use your breath and kind of 
make sure it doesn't collapse and you get a good weld. Then you can preheat it right here. Come over here. Do that. You can it could stick down or straight back. It doesn't matter. It just gives you the end of your T that's more smooth like that. There. Now you've got the T that's when you put block out paint. We call it. You paint back here and you paint here and you paint here and you just see the T that way. Now I'm going to do adjustment here. I'm going to bring that up a little bit for one thing. So you can always go back and tweak it if you have to. Yeah, if you need to tweak it or do something, you can always go back and adjust it or re to some extent you can re-bend things. Is that nice and hot? And if you want to do something without touching it, use a block because it gets hot in places. There we go. Now we have the T. But to do it to do it proper, we'll put a period here, and I'll show you how to do that. We'll take this. They call these soldiers. They're just little block-off tubes to keep the air pressure like a cork. Now, we'll put the hose on the tubulated electrode and put the cork in the other end. Now we can mark right there above that dot. Now I got to come over to the ribbon that crossfires, I'm sorry. Right there, and when it gets soft, like see it's soft now, you want to heat over here and up here, kind of stagger it. So you're going to drop that. Now you got to come over here and smooth it out. What I do, and then. There, we've got our our period. Now we mark over here and bring it back up. And there's a reason for doing that because I have to weld it back together to the D. There, I got a better hold of it now. Now, just kind of hold it straight out like that, close enough. Now we've got a T and a period, because you'll block all that out in between, make a dot there. So there is, you might call it half the project. 
I'll put it over here to cool. Now to make the D, I'll show you how to make the big bends. And go ahead and figure about where, how much it's going to take. Estimate and put a little bit more on there, and I'll just do the whole stick. There we go. Okay, you mark in a little bit where the beginning of the curve starts, and then it'll end right about there. So now, here's another little trick I do. You just kind of eyeball inches. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's about a foot, roughly. And then you can take the same paper and use the dot the things on here to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There you go, now you've got the foot right there. I'll double check, make sure I'm right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There we go, that's close enough. Now, you hook the blow hose on it and the cork in the end again. And now I gotta put the screen on it. And it's a good idea to pre-position your pattern so when you whip over here you don't have to mess around to try to get the right angle. There we go. Now we'll heat a large area. I'll even turn the fire up a little bit. Oop, not that much. There we go. Good. Get it nice and soft. Like a spaghetti noodle. Yeah. Clear spaghetti noodle, and then you kind of do like this and get it nice and heated. And you come over here to blob it down. And you use one of these blocks to flatten it out. Now sometimes it doesn't want to go exactly, so you make another heat like that. Uh, we mark that. You know, I'll just heat that part and get it down. Okay, here we go. There we go. You can see it's smoking, so that keeps the paper from catching on fire. <laughs> so there's the big bin. Now, you come in a little bit right there and mark it, and you got to go off that way. So now we'll come back to the behind you to the crossfire. I think Stevie Ray Vaughan had one of these. What's that? A crossfire, because he wrote a song about oh, it, Stevie yeah. Ray Vaughan. Yeah. I think he used to do neon. I will say, I think we have the same likings with some of our music. Yeah. All right. I 
I gotta heat it just a little bit to get it moving a little longer. We'll come from this way. Mark there. Bend that up like that. Like that. Now, the last bend right here, or for the D that is, I gotta come back over to the crossfire. period here and then put the electrode on there. Electrode on there. And you need a holder for this because it's too close, it'll burn you. <clears throat> okay, one more electrode. And that's something how it just fuses together just by touching it together like that, huh? Yeah, you kind of suck and blow and kind of get a good connection where it's nice and soft there and it makes a good weld. And it doesn't leak. How do you know it doesn't leak? Well, you know, sometimes it does. One of the worst things is you get just a little teeny hole and it's hard to get rid of. Like if it doesn't completely touch right. There, see? Yeah. It takes a lot of practice. You just kind of blow and just look at it and make it kind of straight both ways. Doesn't have to be perfect. Now there's one more bend and then the D will be done. And that's just a, I'll bend it straight up or upward. It doesn't have to be like the pattern exactly where the electrodes go. Eat that right there. Come over here. Sometimes you can just look at it and, without putting it on the pattern like this. When it's not anything, you know, it's something behind where it's going to be painted, it doesn't have to be right on the pattern. So now, I've got the D period. See, that's the period right there. I changed that a little, but that'll work right there. 
Now, one last big thing, and that's putting the two letters together. So, Doc, I want to ask you about this file you were using to cut the tubing with. Is this a special file, or is that a custom file you made? No, these are glass files, but you can find other files that'll work. You just want a thin file, and uh, the new unleaded glass eats them up pretty quick, so you have to just keep re-grinding them and grinding them. Now they get skinny. So, uh, But it says you can use a regular file as long as it's thin and it has a medium uh, coarse grain to it. Okay, now I want to ask you about this block you were using. You got a regular 2 before, but it's got some kind of special material on there? Yeah, this is like a fabric with fiberglass in it so you won't burn on a hot tube. And you, you cover a piece of 2 before, or you can use different things to make a block to flatten out things like a circle. Sometimes the tube will get warpy if you put it on the pattern, so you go around it while it's soft. You don't want to let it get too stiff make or it'll sure it crack stays it. flat. Yeah, that way, right after it's on the pattern, before it gets too stiff, you can, you can smooth it out and make it flatter. That's what, and you can use them for, if you've got something you don't want to handle because it's hot, you can use it like an extra hand uh, too. So that's like a fireproof material that time. Yeah, it just burns, it doesn't catch on fire. And the same with the screen wire, it just keeps the pattern from burning. I use regular pattern paper and just lay the screen over it and I can move it around as needed. So now we're going to join the T and the D together. Yes. The first thing I have to do is shorten the ends of them so they will fit. See, I score the glass. See, the block's also good to, like this, to hold it up where it won't makes it solid to, to file on and then you break that off and shake it and there you go you've got it ready to nice go. Nice clean cut. And you put this on the pattern like that you get a sharpie and you make a line right about a little, little past where you want it to, where the end of the tube is. And now you take the other letter and lay it and you can go close to the line and make your other cut. I'll use another file. This one's getting dull. And sometimes you just can tap it underneath. And it works, but not all the time. Here. There you go. Now, we've got the two ends. And we lay the pattern, the uh, screen down, and put the two letters like so. And now get the blow hose again. And you don't need a cork now because you're sealed up with the electrode. And then your final, you put these two like so. Get them good and hot and melty. Now you put the two letters together. Let it stiffen up. And you there you go. T D for pterodactyl with period season. Or touchdown. Touchdown uh, if you're a football or what else? T D. T D. Oh, T D. Wasn't there a sports car with that in, oh, uh, sports car had that letters in it, TD something, I can't think. Now, the next stage is what we call pumping it down, using a bombarder to burn out impurities and go through the process of pumping the air out and putting in the gas. So, that'll be the next stage. The bombarder? Yes, that's what we call it. That sounds dangerous. Well, they used to call it the dead man switch on that button. Now we're getting into danger zone. <laughs>
Hey, that's nothing. Look what you have to work with. Yeah, you never know. You might have a connecting rod fly out of a crankcase, or you might have some of the toxic stuff you have to, like muriatic acid, you have to clean out carpetrators. Or... <laughs> no, I, I guess we both have things in common. That's right. We have to work with hot stuff, we have manifolds in our business, and we work with toxic stuff. <laughs> well, are you ready to go next door? Okay, we fired, I fired up the vacuum pump, and sh you shut off the main stop cock, and I opened up the neon gas. We have two, two stop cocks, because when we put the gas in the tube, we go back and forth and ladle, what we call it, ladling the gas into the tube. And this is a manometer here, and this is what you, how you tell how much gas to put into the tube. So now, I gotta light the hand torch. Fire it up! Fire it up! Fire it up! Fire it up! There we go. Hi, Steve. I'm Mr. Hand Torch. Light me up. Okay. I don't want to still smell your stinky gas. Whoa! <laughs> now, you adjust the hand... Oops, didn't want to say. I turned it down too fast. There we go. This is a hand torch. You got little concentrated gas and air flames, which will be used to weld onto the manifold. This is the manifold system. This is another blow hose that goes into the manifold system so you can put pressure when you weld your units on. Now, I gotta get a fire. A fire. There we go. And put it in my trash box. <laughs> heat the, call the tubulation on the electrode. We heat it up and bend it so it matches the manifold tubing close enough. Now we're, we've got the pressure we blow into the system, which will make it so I can weld this without it collapsing. There we go. Now that it's on, we open up the main stop valve and start pumping the air out. There we go. Now it's pumping the air out. And we hook the high voltage leads up to the electrodes. And they're on trolley wire, so you can run them the different types of tubes. How much voltage is in there? Uh, well, it has a choke. It works like a backward solenoid to control the output. But if it's on full power, it's supposed to put 20,000 volts at 12 and a half kilovolt amperes. In other words, it would kill you. So you don't want to grab onto those wires, whatever. <laughs> well, then I'll stand over here. No, it's nothing to be far away from. You just don't want to. It doesn't arc that far. Once it's on the tube, you could go like that, it wouldn't hurt. Now, I'm pumping the air out, and this is mica, like they use in stoves in the past. And you put that in between where you don't want, where they're closed, because it can arc through under a vacuum. It can poop and you run your tube. It burns a little hole in both sides. So you put uh, mica between the closed places because it gets real hot and the, the glass is vulnerable to just whoop, burning a hole with a high voltage. Now we get a little piece of uh, paper, this is like stationary paper, make a V in it and lay it right about here, somewhere in between, doesn't have to be exactly the middle. Next I have to turn the bombarder safety switch on, it's over there. There we go. See, that's the safety light there, Mr. Smiley. <laughs> okay. Let me think. I don't hear. This is a push stick. This is the bombarder. Uh, runs what they call a uh, contactor relay. Because it takes 220, 240 volts to run this thing, and it puts out high voltage. Okay. 
So, we take the air out there, but now we'll let the air back in temporarily. You can watch the manometer. Now you hit this, and as it pumps out, it'll light up under a vacuum. Now that's not the true color, that's just the air that's left in the tube, and the vacuum, it lights up under a vacuum without any gas. Now you shut this, and let that go a while, and that'll get the glass hot under a lower pressure, we call it, but it's not much air out of it. It will get the glass hot enough to burn the paper. And then the next stage is let more vacuum in to take more air out and it will get the electrodes hot. Now, I open this up again. Now the electrodes are already hot. And they're, they're, this is the second stage. You're supposed to get your electrodes red or a good part of them. There, that's good enough. Now, set the electronic timer and disconnect your wires and put it back to where there's nothing hooked up to it. it up and it'll burn in and there you go and then I just paint it and it's done. Okay we're just waiting on the uh, vacuum pump to pump down enough and the timer to go off and uh, you'll know when it goes off and then I'll take it off the manifold and we'll go from there. It ought to be going off any time. <laughs> time to take it off. Shut that scared me. That's what I wanted. I didn't want to tell you about that. <laughs> there we go. We turn that, turn that. Now we ladle the gas in by the manometer. I can see it go up. Yeah, I had a, a good guy I know make me that timer, Jason Perry. He, uh, because I kept not hearing my old cooking timers. They weren't very loud and I had the music going. So, hey, I've, I've never missed that one. <laughs> you see, that would be probably 11 millimeters of pressure. I'd say that's close enough. Now we come up, oops, sorry. We come over here. And you, tip it off. You melt that little tubing right next to the electrode and mash the end and there it is. Now we take this over here. Got to get a piece of screen wire. Hey. We'll come over here. My burn in transformer I had hooked up to the side. <laughs> I put it on screen because that new glass was tricky about cracking from being from cold to hot. And it's still probably pretty warm. No, that's not too bad. And I hooked these two up to the electro. Now, give it a little time and it'll burn in in color. What color is it going to be? Clear red, they call it. It's, it's like an orange it's neon gas. How long does that take? Well, sometimes they come in quick, sometimes it takes a little bit. This coming in, it might take, I don't know, a couple, three minutes, four, I don't know. It's coming in.
ended up being the color like in that electro there, that real bright red. Orange. I got another trick. Sometimes I let it cool down and did it again, and it seems like sometimes that comes in quicker that way. This is the burn in unit now, the TD. And so next step is to put the block out paint on. Okay, the next step is what we call block out paint. And we block out the unit where we do not want it to light up. So we get this special water-based block out paint. It comes in gray and black. Let's see the... And it's made by Stazon Company. And it says block out paint. Yes, and it's FMS is the company. They make neon supplies, and they make and sell neon supplies. But now we take uh, the block out paint and we paint the electrodes and the parts we do not want to light up. And I do them by hand mostly, but on large border tube jobs in the past I've uh, set up saw horses in good weather and you can just put a dip pan and go underneath them and don't have to paint them by hand. Can you spray it on there? No, that's not a very good idea because spray paint is thin and you'd have to mask it off and that nah, wouldn't be a good idea but uh, this is kind of thick and you just want to make sure you get it on there like that where it's thick Does enough. it dry quick? Now this doesn't dry as quick but it dries pretty quick as quick as the old paint they stopped use, making it was more like a lacquer base or a volatile base it smelled up it smelled strong but it dried good and it was easy to work with I like it better. <laughs> sometimes you got to put more than one coat on? Yeah, sometimes you have to light it up and you touch up where the streaks are that you don't see when you're putting it on the first time. But uh, yeah, you just block it out by hand. That's what I do. So what if you make a mistake? What if you paint over something you didn't want painted over? Can you scrape that off or get oh, it off of there? Yes, yeah, so if it's still wet you can wipe it off or most of it and use steel wool. Or if it's dry, you can scrape it off with a little... Uh, Razor knife or something? Yeah, one of those. And, uh, and then you can use steel wool and it'll come right off. All right, now it's my turn to try to bend some of this glass tubing. And we'll see how good I am at it. All right, we will see. So what do we do first? Time will tell. First of all, we have what we call a blow hose. You have to okay. learn to use that all right. to keep pressure in your tube so when you bend a sharp bend, it won't collapse on you. So I made you a special blow hose for your different kind of uh, mouth, and uh, we can use that. Oh, because of my teeth? Yes. Yeah, there you <laughs> Well, I think you're probably no. okay to use here. I made another one for you. That one didn't work too good. Maybe oh. I should have sent, had okay. my dentist send an impression of my teeth over ahead of time. Yeah, I should have had a pattern. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that'll work. Yeah. Like wear it around uh, my neck like you? Yeah, you just put it around your neck, put this over to the right. Well, you're left-handed, so to yeah. the left, that's good. Now, what we've got to do is start out with a piece of glass tubing, and I'll make it the length you need. Better. Okay. So you don't have to wrestle around with all the extra. I'll get a cork in the end. Now just remember, I've got I've got plenty of glass. If the first time doesn't work, we can do it again. Okay. First, you start out. You kind of roll it like back and forth all the way around. You have a swivel, they call this. So you go all the way around and get it hot until it starts getting soft, and then heat it on the sides and the bottom at the last. And just get it real hot and hold it 90 degrees or close to it so it'll heat a short area. And when it gets real soft, just kind of let it droop and bring it over here and kind of blow a little bit. Get it going all the way around. Now it's starting to get hot up the sides and the bottom. Heat it mainly. Look at your hose. Your, sorry, your, your, your cork came out. We might have to do that over here. Well, 
bad. When I started, I was... <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. It takes time. I'll tell you what, we'll just practice on a piece of scrap, too. Yeah. Good idea. I don't know what's good to me. Oh, it would probably work. Yeah, there we go. Just don't blow as hard. Let's just make it right there. And just try to, when you get it really hot, kind of bend it upward and kind of almost kind of stretch it out as you're bending. Oh, kind of pull on it? Yeah, kind of pull on it so it won't get so close together. Yeah, kind of go back and forth, make it a little wider. Now just kind of pull and go up. Don't blow very hard, just kind of watch it. Now lay it flat on the paper quick. Yeah, make that down. There we go. That's right. Uh, what you can do is just kind of get a little more heat and blow a little harder and just kind of work it back and forth. You can just do it like this before you put it on the paper too. Matter of fact, you can save that one. Put that back in the fire and heat it. Just try to heat it on all four sides. Yeah, like that. Yeah, especially around on the curved parts. Yeah, like that and like that. Back. Keep going. Get plenty hot. Now go the other way. A little bit more to the other side. Now bring it over and kind of play with it. Make it look more like you need. There you go. Push and pull. See? Oh no, it's too much. You don't want to wait too long or you'll crack it. He makes it look easy. Just like when you're a professional, you make it look easy. All right. Well, well, we well I ruined two of them. Well, you don't want me making neon signs for you. Don't, don't feel bad. It took me out of the house. That one's a little. That one's got a, a wart on it. <laughs> don't feel bad. I was horrible till I got the hang of it. No, no, no. Beat it right on the, the dot. A little bit, yeah. Now, now, bend it right angle, right angle. Come over here and lay it down quick, quick, quick. Now, put the thing on. Put the thing on. Nice. Okay, straighten it up a little. Hey, that's not too bad. Woo! Maybe I would start to out too hard. Yeah. Woo! And there's your dinner. There's your dinner. I gotta work on my youth. L for loser. <laughs> okay, the last stage is to light it up. There we go. And uh, it can be you can get your block out paint and touch up the little places that don't uh, didn't. Yeah, because you gotta put sometimes you gotta put two coats on yeah, there. Yeah, right? yeah, because you don't you can't see it when you're doing it, especially on clear when it's not lit up. So when you light it up, you can touch it up. So there it is. T period D period. T period D period pterodactyl isn't that amazing so that's what it takes to make neon isn't that crazy whoever thought of that who would ever think that to, to put something in a tube like that and that was done when back when in the it 20s? came to the United States in the 20s it was minted in France that's amazing so that's what it takes to do neon you're probably wondering why are we doing a video on neon when we're a small engine channel well we got a surprise coming for you in the future so you just got to stay tuned and keep watching the channel to find out yes so subscribe to this youtube channel terrell fixes all i'm terrell with doc neon follow me with your neon on facebook and instagram go to our web store buy some terrell apparel and as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Making neon with Doc Neon in his laboratory. Wow. Now you're going to give that to me, aren't you? Yep. All right. Cool. All Hang right. out in the shop. There you go. There's your dinner. There's your dinner. 
So who are these two guys? They look like the uh, the Mythbusters, or are they the Smith Brothers from the cough drop box? No, they're the Mythbusters. You want me to light them up and show you? Yeah, light them up. Let's okay. see. I'll do it for a short time because they're shorted out. Oh yeah. Or the bottom's not working correctly. What's that noise? Somebody at the door? Are you expecting somebody? Not really. We better go see who it is. Okay. Who's there? Uh, Gary and little Johnny. Oh, Gary, little Johnny. All right, come in. Oh, oh. I heard there was a robot in here. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's a robot. Quiet down, Charlie. Where's the robot? I want to see it. He's right here. Oh, oh, this robot's awesome. Does it work? No, I'm sorry, little Johnny. Something went wrong last week, and I haven't had time to fix it. Oh, well, it turns out that I'm a robot mechanic. Here, let me take a look at it. Johnny, leave the man's stuff alone. You don't know what you're doing. Oh, let me just take a peek here. Oh, wow, there's a lot of wires in there. Now, Johnny, don't be messing around back there. There's high voltage back there. I see the problem right here. It's this thing. All right, fire it up, Doc. Whoa, wow! Look, Grandpa, I fixed it. Oh, Johnny, you amazed me. You got it really working. I couldn't figure it out last week. And there's your dinner. What do you say, Robert? There's your dinner. Whoa. Oh. Let me see that. I think so. <laughs> nah, I don't think I want to fix that clock. But, uh... I didn't close the door. Mm, nah, I can't fix that. <laughs> no crotchety. Be your normal self. Okay. <laughs> That's me way back in the 80s, probably. That's back when I did the night, when we did nightclubs and the Pan Am games and big jobs, really big jobs. Okay, now I'm going to attempt to bend some tubing. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to bend some of this glass tubing. So what do I need to do? Well, first you need the new... Sorry, sorry, I'm going to Hey, I've been working on this stuff for about 40 years, okay, bro? I think I know what I'm doing. Johnny, you little... Oh, wow, there's a lot of wires. There's high voltage back there. I'm not scared of that. That's my favorite ACDC album. Can you buy it for me now? <laughs> I don't have that kind of money, Johnny. I'm sure, it's very, very expensive. Yeah, well, I'm not leaving until it's in the back seat of the car. So, you better pony up some cash. All right, I'll call Grandma. Whoa! Whoa! It stops. 